And um, what we usually do, Karen, is we just kind of go around the room and have the students say hello and just say a few words about um, their work and where they kind of are in their studies at Portland State. And, um, and then you can say a few words as well. And then, then I'll kind of officially start the interview. Okay, okay. so I'm still Patricia teaching the history department. <laughs> um, perhaps, uh, Liza, would you like to start? Hi, Hi. <laughs> I'm Liza Shade. I'm a grad student here in public history and I'm working on a thesis about uh, the current state of historic homes in Oregon right now. So I'm kind of, lots of historic preservation, collections, museum work. So, nice. yeah. um, Cleophis, would you like to go next? Sure, I'm Cleophis Jambliss. I am um, a conflict resolution senior and I'm looking forward to getting into the um, master program in, in peace studies. Uh, Cleophis is also the artist in residence for conflict resolution this term, and she is um, works in many media, including video. So she's going to be sort of our documentarian on the video side. So she has a very special role. Luckily, she's, she is a senior, but like she has another whole year on campus. So she told me <laughs> that we'll be working together in the coming year. Nice. So thank you. Um, Stephanie? Yes, right when you said that, somebody's pushing a cart down my street, so it's very loud. But um, oh. hello, I'm back again. I'm Stephanie. I am a um, just ending my first year as a grad student in the public history program. It's very nice to meet you. Okay. Nice to meet you, Alex Ibarra. Hi, Alex Ibarra. I am a first year grad student in public history and Chicano history. Um, Great to meet you, and I'm excited to hear what you're going to have to say. <laughs> Thank you. Una, go right ahead. Can't hear you. I'm getting like a buzzing sound. Are you guys? Yeah, a little bit. And I'm, I'm Una. Yep, there you go. <laughs> I, I think I have a pair of crappy headphones. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, um, uh, I'm a graduate student in uh, public history. And Jake, go right ahead. Thank you. Uh, hi, I'm Jake Hutchins. I'm also a graduate student in public history. And my uh, research speciali specialization is Native history in Indian education. Cool. Thank you so much. So it's kind of a dream team from my point of view of very seasoned, thoughtful. I think I missed one. Oh. Alex B. Thank you, pardon. <laughs> you know, when the when the squares move around, the, it's like it's like celebrity squares. Remember that show? Okay, sorry. Go ahead, Alex. We Berg. do. But... Sorry. Hey, sorry. I'm <laughs> Alex Berg. I'm a undergraduate history major. Um, this is my last term. Cool. Good. Uh, She's before. about to defend a wonderful honors thesis this week. Oh, nice, nice. On the, on the enforcement of the fugitive slave law in Ohio in 1855, uh, wow. a, a teenage, a young teenage girl who was a slave actually got her freedom. Wow, and that's non-specific. Really, really <laughs> interesting story. Well, it's all well. That, well, that's a great segue <laughs> to oral history, Karen. Yeah, it's a great no, segue that's to great. Oral history because everybody has a story. And so yeah. we're very grateful that you have some time with us. So I'll begin us officially by saying today is May 27th, uh, 2020. I'm Patricia Schechter and we're delighted to welcome Karen Waller to our public history seminar, who's going to talk about her career in conflict resolution in the early days as she was the first student to earn a master's degree with a thesis in the year 2000. So welcome. Thank you. And thank you so much. Um, we'll just get right into the first question. Um, what drew you to pursue a degree in conflict resolution back in the late 1990s and so forth? And, and one of the questions we ask, it's, it's dovetails with one of the questions we ask all of our narrators. If conflict resolution was the answer in your world, what was the question? I know. I really like that. <laughs> yeah, that's one of our little bellwether questions. <laughs> nice. So, um, 
So I did make notes, which I will probably refer to, and I really appreciate knowing the questions in advance, because um, it was really fun to look back at some old journals and other stuff. And um, so um, I guess kind of to start out, um, it was 1997. I'd been in a bunch of different jobs, um, largely administrative, and I was working at OHSU, and I was completely uninspired. And, um, and my daughter had just started kindergarten. I'm a single mom. I actually found out about a homeowner's program, so I, I bought a house. There was a whole lot of stuff going on, and I'm like, you know, I could be doing this really uninspired job for my whole life, or I could I could like try to find a grown-up job that uses my skills and maybe I'm passionate about. And um, so um, I guess like, you know, the question is what, what, you know, arena would best use my, the skills that I want to use. And um, so uh, in so I'm kind of open to universe, like the universe's signs. I'm a little bit floofy in that way. Um, in fact, I once made a decision to go to Ireland based on a pack of cigarettes at a bus stop. That's a whole other story. But um, I, uh, so uh, this, so I'm thinking about this, cogitating on the question, happened to be walking down um, Broadway and close to Portland State and just uh oh I think we froze Jers, um grocery store in the produce section and I heard someone talking about mediation and a new mediation program and um and that was Rob <laughs> And uh, so um, Rob Gould, Robert Gould, and um, so I would kind of sidled over and I said, hmm, well, this is kind of interesting. And uh, so I made an appointment with him and I was so inspired by his passion and the language like he was using about, uh, you know, just he was kind of speaking my language and I was like, Hmm. And I've been thinking about the, uh, the master's in social work. I was, I was thinking about an MSW, but I was, I was just so inspired by his passion that I was like, you know what, I'm going to check this out and maybe I'll apply it at MSW later, but let's just see, you know, what this is. Um, let's see. What was the question? Um, <laughs> I lost track of <laughs> Oh, what led me to here? I might have actually maybe answered that um yeah i think i answered that uh patricia i'm not patricia I'm not you're on that. mute yeah so rob's a great talker he's very eloquent. oh yeah <laughs> he's a delightful conversationalist and I, i've gotten to know him over the last two years uh -huh. can you can you take us back to that that shared language is there a word that stands out for you Oh boy. Um, gosh, and nothing emerges. Um, but I think the uh, like the 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 thinking, feeling, the heart, head. Um, I'm really smart. <laughs> he didn't say that, but I could tell. And and but I'm impact. I have a lot of you know. I'm impassioned about, you know, bringing this alternative dispute, this whole new kind of way of, of I, will, I will say um, in 1997, President Clinton enacted the um, dispute, uh, Alternative Dispute Resolution Act of 1990, well, it was 1996 or seven. And so there was a lot of, um, I think, and that kind of leads to the, um, activism question yeah. um it just suddenly like made this uh, a, a a reality a thing that suddenly had value you know 
talking to people, talking to each other, learning about each other, resolving conflicts without having to sue each other. It was like there was some language happening and there was some acknowledgement like, like, wow, <laughs> like people might pay attention to this. So, um, so that was really exciting. Um, I guess I'm going to say the heart head and Patricia, maybe I stole that from you, but, um, but it was really, <laughs> it, it was really that it was like, God, you know, we're smart and we love people. And we've always, I mean, my mom said from the time I was, you know, preteens, I was helping resolve conflicts with my friends, you know, and their parents or whatever. So like, I, I knew this was a thing I do and I like to do and it kind of, you know, so I think that's all I'll say at the moment. Yeah. Well, if, if you wouldn't mind, I love the deep, the resonance, that deep resonance around, um, humans, human conflict. <laughs> yeah, Is there yeah. a little story you want to share from your deeper past? I mean, this people do this. Right. This is very welcome in oral history and you're in very good company with <laughs> other folks, your other narrators, your fellow and sister narrators. It's um, often that kernel of self. Yeah, yeah. In our deep um, past, which becomes right. activated and validated and brought forward. Yeah. That allows a kind of affirmation and even sometimes a kind of healing. That can that allows us to take that step into something new. So I wonder if there's a you know. Oh, you're doing this going to make me cry thing, aren't you? Just oh. in case. <laughs> no, I'm going to try. Here's my tissues. <laughs> um, well, I mentioned my mom, and um, you know, her telling me about uh, you know that that this is kind of a propensity that I had. I'm the middle kid um, of you know three kids. Um, but one thing she said is, uh, so I had a friend in uh, junior high, Cindy, and she and her mom were always like, gah, 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 which surprisingly, a teenage girl and her mother fighting. Oh. Okay. Uh, <laughs> and so my mom said, you know, you used to, I heard you talking on the phone to Cindy and you'd be kind of counseling her about how you might approach her mom about this thing. And then like I go, to their house and I'd sort of talk to her mom a little bit. <laughs> and so I sort of do this little, you know, maybe I just seeing things that could be little, you know, maybe if this word wasn't used or whatever, you know. Yeah, and then, yeah, yeah. And then um, so other uh, huge um, opportunities to learn about conflict and my reaction to conflict are um, divorcing a kind of unstable uh, person <laughs> and having a daughter with him and um, you know we got divorced when she was one and so it was constant negotiation with someone who wasn't always you know on super rational footing. So um, that was a lot of quite painful learning for me. But good learning, you know, I mean, you take, you take that as, as your, you know, toolkit wherever you go. So, yeah. Wow, those are powerful stories. Thank you for sharing those. Yeah. It just gives so much grounding to your decision and it just makes it so human. Really appreciate that. So, so tell, I mean, one of the things I think I tipped my hand in our pre-interview that, you know, this particular group of public historians, and I put myself in the middle of them, mm -hmm. were very hungry for the student story, the student feel from that first mm -hmm. cohort. Mm -hmm. Not to put too much pressure on you, but right. the next question is sort of about what is your sense of um, the tone in the classroom? So you're, mm -hmm. you're ready for this program, you've had this sort of nice affirmation of a fuller sense of yourself and your talents and your history through Rob. Yeah. Which is fabulous. Yeah. Who's in the room, you know, kind of who's in the yeah. room, what does the room feel like? What is 512 like, right? <laughs> um, what was the feel? Yeah, there was, there was a lot of excitement. So I was not the first one in. There were, there's kind of an existing cohort because it was, just getting started. In fact, um, I don't think he got, um, what is it called? Certified. The, the program wasn't, I don't know, ratified or whatever. Um, 
till well into us, you know, probably two years into the classes. So, um, well, as I said, this, you know, this ADR Act came out and almost all of uh, my cohort were from government agencies. Like it was, um, uh, it was people, you know, working people who were just really excited about, like I mentioned, you know, this like, wow, this is, this is a thing, <laughs> you know, this is a, like some human skills. Um, so uh, there was some real excitement in the classroom and um, kind of that heart head thing again. These were all smart people who, you know, were, you know, in touch with, um, you know, caring, just caring people. And so we had this like uh, really just great connection. We were all just excited and speaking the same language that we hadn't had the opportunity to connect with others on. Not everyone, you know, grocks the stuff, <laughs> you know. Uh, um, and you mentioned uh, the question talks about activism on campus, I think. And, and uh, I, you know, so involved in my own world you know my daughter in kindergarten and classes and I was working half time at um which was was CAPS and counseling and psychological services is now part of SHAC and so I had a lot going on and so in terms of campus I couldn't really say activism or not but certainly we all felt in the program that sense of of I mean, really activation, you know, like, um, yeah. Um, let's see what else in the classroom. And, and there were some fabulous um, teacher mentor people, Mary Zinkin. Um, I can't remember if Bard Tint came in earlier or later, but of course she's now all over campus <laughs> doing her amazing stuff. Um, Oh, uh, let's see, Charles Tracy, who became my like lifelong friend until he died and um, and met very strong mentor. Um, and so, so there was, you know, there was some really um, good stuff going on. And I found um, in Mary, I found, uh, How do I say? Like a, a, a female intuition that was like strong and and proud. It wasn't like, um, you know, taking second seat at all. It was like, this is valid. <laughs> so so you know that was that was super cool for me. Um, and maybe not another activist feeling thing. Yeah, yeah. I love. Um the word activation. I That's know, I just thought of that. Isn't that good? That is yeah. <laughs> really lively, very vivid. That's really yeah. very, 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 very helpful for us to, again, to kind of reconstruct the, the language that you all spoke and how that's going to change over time. And so we yeah. want to, we yeah. have in our ears. Yeah. I, you know, oh, I do. I'm sorry. I do want to mention um, Mark Danley with the BPA was also a huge, huge mentor to me. So he's another name I definitely don't want to forget. With Bonneville. Yes, yes. Yeah, right, right. Yeah, his name's come up. But, you know, when I was, I was telling the students that we were sharing a website woes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I actually, over the weekend, typed up, entered into the website, the list of all the MA thesis with their links to PDX Scholar. Oh, uh-huh. And I did notice the name Charles Tracy, and that is okay. not a name that we have bumped into. Oh, Oh, okay. I wonder if you could just say just a little bit about his his field oh, and how man. he imparted to you. Sounds like it was a really positive relationship. So maybe just yeah. a little bit of light on, on Charles. That'd be great. Gosh. Putting you on the spot. You know, this. yeah. I mean, he was like more like an angel than I even know what his background was. Um, golly, let me think about that for a minute. Um, well, we ended up co-teaching a class together, um, which is 
was just a small facet of of all the things that we did oh man well he, he's a buddhist he was a buddhist um oh yeah he was he used to be a cop he was a police officer in chicago i want to say and um i don't know how he navigated his way to to what he was doing and where he was and what he was doing with us but um he was someone who'd really done the the hard work like he was he was so great um <laughs> <laughs> well, these are people that change our lives, you know, it's, yeah. I we don't know how they do it. It is somewhat of a miracle that it happens. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. it's and, wonderful. Yeah. And he died of esophageal cancer about 10 years ago. And, um, but he was, you know, he was just, he was so amazing. Oh, oh Karen, <laughs> they're beautiful memories. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Fantastic. I am a crier, by the way, so don't worry. <laughs> you're, you're, you're safe with us. Trust me, you're safe with us. Um, so, so here you are in these very interesting classes filled with, it sounds like a lot of people, not dissimilar to yourself, people who are in the work world, mm -hmm. that, who've set some high, who are seekers. They're seekers mm -hmm. right. who are looking for more. Mm -hmm. and they yeah. want that more to be in alignment with their with their passions and gifts around, yeah. around people. Yeah, right. yeah. So that's very vivid in your discussion. Um, and it sounds like you know you got some good signals about that. It's like oh, this is the place where this kind of conjuncture uh, is going to be welcome. Yeah, validated your discussion of Mary also like that these kinds of full range of knowledge, yeah. Full range yeah. of ways of knowing are going to be validated right. and upheld. Yeah. Nonetheless, <laughs> I'm sure you, you I'm sure you learned some new things, some surprising things, mm -hmm. and it may have even created some dissonance. That's also the sign of a good education that you mm -hmm. get you know, <laughs> challenged and not, you know, we want validation for students and we want, you know, engagement, but also it's good to bump into new stuff and then mm -hmm. figure it out. Mm -hmm. Can you take us, can you take us back to a moment or a passage where, you were learning something surprising or even difficult or something that you even resisted, frankly. Those are rich, that's rich with learning as well. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yes. Right on. <laughs> I have actually the quintessential story um, with Mary Zinkin. Uh, uh, let's see. Um, so there were only, there were limit number of classes um in those you know especially in those early days and um you know i was new to the the cohort and um so it's this one class that was required and i she capped it there was a cap and i couldn't get in and so uh i was very upset by that and you know because i had kind of things locked in and i had a lot going on and so um you know, I challenged her on it. I begged her. I was like, she, she stayed firm. And um, I, I think it maybe had to do with um, numbers and being able to partner off in various things. But anyway, uh, that was, I was pissed <laughs> and frustrated. And, um, and so, uh, and there was a, I was in another class with her, I think it, it must have been that term, um, and it was, uh, we were doing some role playing uh, with some, you know, some mediation stuff, and she said, does anyone have a conflict they can think about that they'd be willing to role play, and I was like, huh, should I be super brave and engage in this, and so I did, I said, if you're comfortable, <laughs> I do have something. And um, so we proceeded to kind of mediate ourselves, you know, did a, did a role play of a difficult conversation. And it was so amazing. Like it really um, did, it was a perfect example of how 
how you can get from this point to this point and in understanding in still being unhappy but accepting reality um in being right but someone else also being right or you know valid <laughs> you know so so it's actually like really the um just the perfect example of of what i was learning maybe what she was learning too you know so yeah that's yeah. so wise that's so wonderful <laughs> um can you i'm gonna probe though with your mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. was there... this was 20 years ago remember so well, i know but, okay. <laughs> but we are what we we got what we got i right. got to now so right. so how how perfect but um let's see whoops um is there from that role play and mm -hmm. from that moment of bravery mm -hmm. is there a little dimension to the exchange or I thought you're gonna say dementia yes no sorry <laughs> there's that too <laughs> a little aspect of the of the of the scene mm -hmm. a keyword a gesture that, that stands out in your memory um I, I am i know i'm drilling down here but this is where oral history is such a gift you know it's funny i remember where we were sitting at a table like in kind of the shape of the room um for some reason uh gosh and what was that shape what was the shape of the room um so let's see it was kind of a um uh whatever that up oh. <laughs> not a square but that longer one <laughs> i'm going completely blank right um, right thank you. <laughs> um and and so mary and i were at the corner a corner of a table um the door was there and then our, my classmates were behind me around this rectangle table and there was a window behind. Uh, and in regards to a specific word or phrase or anything, I, I really, I, I don't, I don't have anything. Fair enough. I mean, do, do you, so you, 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 you very nicely, you can recall. Right. It was, it was impactful for sure. Yeah needing to summon, summon some courage. Uh-huh, yep. Which I am, uh, heart courage is, I think, one of my strongest suits. Um, mm. But, you know, and, and actually that was probably one of uh, the hugest lessons for me in my, you know, in my studies and in this whole experience was, um, what I always considered a weakness, which is, you know, the crying and, um, and being sensitive and, um, you know, stuff like that, that, that maybe I felt um, really shy about or um, other people had kind of put me down or I felt like, why do I always cry? You know, all that stuff. Um, I found out that it's, it's super valid it's like my um my like even outburst uh you know like which was pretty much what i had with the you know with the not getting into the class um those happened to me a fair amount throughout my life uh and i realized that that's because i'm feeling i'm feeling what's in the room i'm sensing what's going on around me and i'm I'm affected by it, you know, I'm really sensitive. And um, instead of being always a weakness, it's actually a, a real point of strength and um, something that not everyone can put out on the table. And I can often start some really important conversations through that. Um, and so that was a really big learning Thing. Fantastic. So. <laughs> fantastic. so I'm gonna I'm gonna keep going because you're so eloquent and and I think we're I think we're we're getting some traction. You're getting some traction on this mm -hmm. deep learning. So I'm gonna just one more and then we'll move on. So one of the things the students and I are wrestling with mm -hmm. in these narratives and in also understanding about 
how humans mm -hmm. think about peace, how they think about conflict resolution, how they think about war, how they think about human mm -hmm. disputes, how they think about conflict. All that easy stuff. All that easy yeah. stuff. And yeah. so what, uh -huh. he, what comes up pretty regularly is that, mm -hmm. of course, each, each human has their own kind of theory of power, their own kind of framework for making meaning, for leveraging their own needs, mm -hmm. for negotiating in everyday life, as we all do. Mm -hmm. And so in terms of this deep learning, what do you think the theory of power, can you, what was the theory of power that was being taught? And do you think when you came out of this role play, you had a new one, an adjusted one, or mm -hmm. now you had more than one, or what about how power works? Because yes, we can validate one another's emotion mm -hmm. and experience, mm -hmm. and power stays right where it was. Right, right. Okay. I'm gonna see if any of my notes give me kind of a way to approach that. Um. Hmm. Not really. <laughs> um. <laughs> um. Gosh, that's such a good question. Um. I guess kind of a little piece of that would be um, that, gosh, it's hard. Um, the whole being right concept, I guess. Um, uh, I can tend to be a little bit bossy throughout my life. And so uh, I, I always, because I'm sensitive and because I think a lot, and because I feel a lot, I have come from a place of I think I'm right about this I don't know I am right about this. <laughs> so, oh and so to recognize that um, I can be right and the other person can be right you know it's not a I'm right you're wrong it's a I I'm right for me and you're right for you and we can disagree um and there's that you know you don't have to resolve it you know i could have just walked away and she could have said no i'm not engaging with you on this you know so um which would be her power you know um that would be a different kind of power that she okay. could have chosen to wield uh and and so i guess that's the closest i can come to answering that question that's wonderful. I mean, I think as a, because I have my professor hat on too today, <laughs> I have enormous empathy when students can't get into a class. I'm sure. When students yeah. are about, you know, they've got, they're juggling 10 plates in the air and mm -hmm. then they they bump up hard against yeah. a, yeah. Book, a reg, a, a cap of this, of that. Yeah. And yeah. so I, this is, this is structural violence. I'm going to put that mm -hmm. out there. Yeah, yeah. Because we offer something to students and then we take it away. Mm -hmm. Or we offer a degree and we don't have enough room in the classes. To right. me, right. problem. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Problem. That's to me, that's a version of structural violence and not okay. Mm -hmm. Right? At the same time, because I'm a department chair, I perfectly You're the well messenger. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I perfectly well understand that our non that our non tenure line faculty are underpaid. Right. They are doing way too much anyway. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. these yeah. are the small places where they can exert some control over their ever ballooning labor that, yeah. that's thrown on their backs. You yeah. know, as PSU person, mm -hmm. that's happening to us right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're more than, we're 50% or more adjuncts. We're like well, and riding on the backs. Everything <laughs> at PSU is yeah. under supported. We're at yeah. point 0.7 where we should be in IT nationally. Yeah. You know, yeah. you know right. so. Nothing. And, but they're winning awards, though, for being, you know, the work. Being amazing award. anyway. Yes. Yeah. Like PSU students. That's what PSU students do. They don't get what they yeah. should have, and they, right. they triumph. Yeah. And I think that's something, you know, because we just, like, a lot of us just love PSU. And, and, and now that's, and I think that's being abused in a lot of ways, um, taking advantage of, at least. And, uh, but those of us, 
I started at PSU as a 16 year old undergrad in 1980. <laughs> and so, you know, I went for five years, I did a study abroad, I came back, I moved to Seattle, I got married, I moved back to Portland, realized I was nine credits away from finishing a general studies degree. So I did that. I went away again. I came back for a master's, I started working, I kept working, I went away, you know, and I came back. And now I've been back for 13 years. And yes, um, more and more and more and more is loaded on us. And that's the nature of a public, you know, pu public institution. It's the nature of the world right now. It doesn't make it feel any better. Yeah. But anyway, we're no, slightly no. digressing, but. No, no, but this yeah. is wonderful because okay. it has to do with, it, it's wonderful because it, it, it captures the interstitial quality of CR and the way that it reached a certain segment of the students, mm -hmm. potential students with its special brand, if you will. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and then it has its story as it unfolds. And mm -hmm. so the beautiful description of um, how we function in the particular pond, you know, how this fish <laughs> functions in the particular pond we're, right. we're in. So it's right. very rich. And I think we're actually doing great on time and great with our okay, list. Good. But good. maybe we could press on to say, so thank you for that wonderful discussion. Um, tell us a little bit about how you chose your thesis topic, where that fit in this journey, mm -hmm. and then kind mm -hmm. of what you found, what you found, what was your argument, how, how did that all happen? Um, yeah, well, um, if we go back to the what important, um, you know, mind opening things I found um, in my studies was the Myers Briggs Briggs type indicator MBTI, and um, this tool just opened a lot of things for me. It's like, how do we find? I know there are other structures by which to you know consider ourselves, but this was so useful in terms of especially. Um, team, teamwork. So, you know, it, on the job, um, it just, you know, with, um, with workplace mediation, but all teams, you know, to, to yeah. really understand where am I on this spectrum and how can I um, have such truth here? Well, again, this other person has their truth here and wait, we're talking about the same thing. And, but how are we not agreeing? Cause we're, looking at it totally differently thinking you know what are the facts da 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 feeling well, how do those facts make me feel you know like um and it's not always a gender thing and it's 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 just a thing and um so that uh that was extremely impactful and what i you know ended up doing my thesis on um but i will say that a couple things. I felt like Rob sort of um, rushed me into trying to decide on a topic and I kind of panicked about it. Like I had no idea. Um, and, you know, I started talking to different professors. I kind of have a psychology-ish background. And so I started talking to psych professors and then we kind of talk stuff out and they say, hey, you should go talk to so-and-so in education. And then I talk there. And so, so, and then I, um, I had a friend in, in South Africa and he got married and invited me to his wedding and paid my way. <laughs> wow. So I went to South Africa and I worked out this whole, the truth and reconciliation hearings were going on, the TRC. And so I attended a couple of, like, I, I kind of wove that into, um, what I, what I thought my interests were and, and uh, into what I, I thought I could develop into a thesis. So then working with it for a little while is like, this is too big, too amorphous, you know, and, and the more kind of people I talked to said, no, you got to make it, just got to tighten the thesis topic up or you will go crazy. Um, so uh, I was doing my practicum at Bonneville Power in the, um, <laughs> going blank again, uh, uh, employee, uh, 
Well, anyway, people who are helping people. Yeah. And, um, like HR or something? Uh, yeah. Um, I'll think of it. I'll think yeah, of it. Sure. Um, and uh, like it, it, it was kind of dis dispute resolution. Um, but it was where I did my practicum with Mark Danley. And um, I was... I was working through things. I had been inspired by the MBTI. Um, I was actually doing like case intake. So I was, I was hearing employee challenges and I was, you know, starting to see this stuff in real life. And I was like, wow, I have so shared neutrals, uh, which started in that office, um, was a, a inter, a inter agency mediation mediator program mediation program, which is what a lot of the people in um, in my cohort were. So you know, one of them worked for BPA, one of them worked for Forest Service, da da da. And so, so this shared neutrals was mediators from different trained the same way from different agencies who could mediate. Uh, the other agencies uh, conflicts yeah. because that was a truly neutral situation and there'd be no perception of oh, well they work in you know HR and they must know do 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 and so it was a wonderful concept and um, uh, that I really embraced and so then I was like wow but not all these guys are 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 the same you know I could look at personality types I was like, wow, this guy's really like really into the facts and da da da. And so it just got me thinking, wow, okay, I can work with this. <laughs> and it was right there in front of me. So I had this um, 25, it was less than 30. It was a, um, it was the group, the existing group that I was working with. And um, so I had this, uh, you know, this system, the MBTI thing, um, and um, it just felt like I could work with this. So there's this tool, and then I thought, well, I can make this other tool that would kind of get at this, you know, how these personality styles might affect how a mediator goes about resolving a conflict. Um, and so that's what it ended up to be, which, so I will say something though. <laughs> I always feel like I cheated in making this a quantitative uh, methodology instead of a qualitative methodology. And qu quite frankly, it was because I was talking to different people, to, to a couple different people. And, and it was, you know, that, uh, a, a statistic guy mm, whose name I can't remember now. Um, he, he said, you know, I think we could crunch this. We can make it into a, you know, quantitative thing. And, and it was like, oh, that would be a lot easier because <laughs> it's this number with this number and then you have a result and then you can talk about it. And so instead of, doing the interviews and doing SPSS and, you know, getting keywords and da, 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 da. It was, it, it was just kind of there for me. And so yeah. I was, and, and I was, you know, like I said, a lot going on and, but just like, how is the word it felt like that was cheating, but the end product was, I got those results and how I talked about the results was just as valuable, I thought, as, doing all this other stuff. Um, now, it, it was subje very subjective because I made the second tool. I made the, um, the, inner, the questionnaire that kind of tried to get at how, how would you approach this and what will you feel the most important elements of this conflict are. Um, so, so that was subjective. I did have a lot of people look at them first. Um, but let's see, I'm off on a little bit of a spiral. Uh, have I, <laughs> have no, I it's, it's wonderful. It's wonderful. I mean, I, I think that, um, what you, what you're sharing is that you 
had to, um, or you had the opportunity to sort of um, improvise, but in a, in a, in a, in a grounded kind of way. Yeah. Yeah. Um, like using the, yeah. Ask the questions you wanted to ask to make something that was actually doable, which is very common on the PSU graduate landscape. That's, yeah. Yeah. At least it's doable. Yeah. And, um, and that you had to consult multi and, and conflict resolution mm -hmm. is a multidisciplinary field. Mm -hmm. so you're not just tracked down one little trail. Right. You, it's like my, you know, they used to say in the movies, you know, too much, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, you know, you know, you know, you're alive to the many, many possibilities. And that sometimes can be, it's very American, right? Too many choices. <laughs> well, thank you for that validation. I do appreciate that. Oh, my goodness. I mean, it, it's, uh, it's, you know, I've been immersed in the program for two years, and I've audited many, 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 many graduate transcripts to try <laughs> to figure out how do students move through this program. Hmm. And so it's a very, it's a very, it's very familiar, and it's, it's both the strength of the program, and it can sometimes be a challenge yeah. um, because yeah. of some of the structural things you've already yeah. flagged. There's only so right. much time. There's only so many resources. There's mm -hmm. these very special windows that students need to be able to jump through to really finish right. their credentials. So it's a wonderful yeah. discussion. I and I jumped through them all first. <laughs> right. <laughs> there was a lot of groundbreaking that I had to do, um, even to the point where um, when I was working with the grad office to, um, you know, to get to get the actual degree, we were like what should we call this? <laughs> should we call it masters in, you know, conflict, you know, so, so we had to actually f work out exactly, and, you know, and then how do I write what my credentials are? Karen A. Waller, MS, conflict resolution, you know, like, so it was, it was, it was the things that, um, uh, just that he wouldn't have thought of, but because I was like, and I think I almost had the advantage. Well, I'm someone who likes getting things done. Uh, but I think I had the advantage of coming in a little later than the first cohort because it felt very amorphous, I think, to them because they were just, they, it, I had just slight, the advantage of slightly more structure already. So I think that kind of launched me ahead a little bit. Um, so, uh, yeah, yeah. That's, that's amazing. That is so rich. Um, we're doing great on time. I do want to leave a, just a minute or two to open it up to the floor for uh, our rest of our colleagues to okay. maybe probe yeah. or follow up a little bit. Yeah. Um, and, but, but maybe a lead in question would mm -hmm. be, what's the most important thing you would want future learners or our people who are going to gather around this 25th anniversary next year to know about these founding years? What's really important to you, particularly from the student perspective, mm -hmm. which I know you kept a, um, your finger on the pulse of. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, What's the most important thing? Um, I guess just uh, going with, your passion or you know if you're drawn to something and it's and you can make it feasible you know do it <laughs> and then also know that and that you know this is hindsight and probably much easier to say than to do but even if you don't, don't get a job in it exactly all of those skills all your skills, whether you're doing research or, you know, or mediating things or teaching a class or whatever, all those skills are applicable and all those mentors will stay with you. You know, like that's, that's what I think is Fabulous. stuff that stayed with me. It took me a while to realize that maybe with the whole toolkit, tool, toolbox uh, skill set thing, but in hindsight that that's really been important yeah thank you yeah thank you so much yeah. um thank you for a wonderful interview and i want to open up to uh the assembled for follow-ups and probes cleophas go right ahead you said heart courage 
And mm -hmm. your description is, I'm one of those people too, that when I'm like really passionate about something mm -hmm. or angry, I start to cry because mm -hmm. it's breaking my heart. Yeah. So it was, I felt like that was a good description of it. Right. Um, yeah. And yeah. Would you say that's what you meant by um, heart courage? Yeah, uh, I think being able to... Um, someone grew up in your heart that you just have to cry about it. Yeah, yeah. I think it's, you know, really being in touch with how you're feeling. And then, like, for me, I think, I just think of crying as kind of, it's, it's just it's spilling over. <laughs> it's like, this is too much. <laughs> Blah. <laughs> uh, so, so, that's, I, that's just kind of, yeah, I think. The crying is good. Yeah. Good for the soul. Yeah. It doesn't always make you look very pretty, but, um, <laughs> But I think, yeah, I mean, it makes some people extremely uncomfortable. And sometimes you do feel kind of dumb and it might not be in, feel like it's the right place in the right time, but it is what it is. And sometimes um, being able to show that uh, vulnerability can be really powerful. So. Well stated. I mean, vulnerability, I always struggle with this in the classroom, is we have to be vulnerable to, to learn. Mm -hmm. We do. You mm -hmm. have to let down your guard a little bit to right. learn. And that's not validated. It's all about, you know, lobbing the formed idea right. and, and smashing whatever has come before. I mean, it's a very different model of learning. Yeah. So, well, yeah. so want to open up some other probes? Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I didn't see anyone else um, asking a question, but I was just going to say that I noticed that um, my sons got that from me. That nice. <laughs> they'll be real passionate and also they'll just start crying yeah. because I told them it was wrong to cry. I told me, you know, it's a good thing to do, but it's um, interesting how society puts that on mm -hmm. that they can't, they shouldn't cry. Right. You know, they hey, boys don't cry. Don't you know that? <laughs> and they better cry. <laughs> <laughs> they have a lot to cry about, right? <laughs> yeah. Cry when that baby's born, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Well, good for you. I congratulate. I really enjoyed your talk. Thank um, you. I don't want to put lies on the spot, but she had a very good intuition about where our time might go today. So maybe a version of I'm your, on the spot. <laughs> I don't want to put you on the spot. Sorry, not sorry. One of my favorite phrases. Sorry, not sorry. No, I just had a couple of little, like, maybe easy questions. Okay. Um, first of all, what are some processes of healing that you learn about in conflict resolution? I feel like that's kind of an important, mm -hmm. like, end product, mm -hmm. right? Is healing. And or ongoing. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, boy, let's see. Did you say you thought that was an easy question? I don't know. <laughs> I guess, yeah. I suppose it's not, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I think the power of saying what you need to say and being heard uh, is like 85% of, of healing. Um, and then I guess, and this is ch just on the spot, um, I think being able to apply even a little bit of what you learned from that will kind of take you into the, the future. And, and I think you, you heal through that learning. And um, yeah, yeah. Through the application of everything you've learned. And right, right. Yeah, yeah. And then I had one more. <laughs> uh -huh. What would you want to see in an exhibit about conflict resolution? Yeah, uh, that's yeah. a good idea. Right? This is Patricia something we're, we're mentioned about putting that. together. Yeah. Um, uh, and Patricia and I, um, in our brief discussion earlier, I said, uh, you know, just having this opportunity led me back to old journals and stuff like that. Um, and I found a copy of a letter I'd written to my dad. And, um, you know, basically it's it kind of said about what I just said to you about how I found the program. And I'm like, dad, I really think this is a good fit for me and blah, 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 blah. And, and s something, I mean, I think presenting 
maybe people's snippets of people's thoughts or process or you know some something visual and and written that uh, was like sounded an kind of cool. moment for you right? yeah yeah although i don't know if people would actually read it but <laughs> i was really into zines for a while and so so i always liked kind of a little you know making the little things but i i don't you know we're so digital now that i don't know how that might work but maybe thought bubbles or i don't know but uh yeah i'd have to think about that a little more uh, do That's you have ideas that you want? for putting you on the spot though. right right <laughs> um and if you had ideas and you wanted to run them by me i mean i'm i would be totally available to give my reactions or thoughts on that yeah yeah okay. thank you be, yep, you're welcome. I want to be mindful of our time. I mean, another idea that the students came up with was um, like to do a campus walking tour of the history of CR. Oh, interesting. Which on maybe with different people mm. giving testimony at the different stops along the way. I mean, there's like the Peace Poles, and then there's like Newburger Hall, and then there's yeah. huh. the police office, you know, where, you know, because a lot of stuff over the right. years, yeah. students have been very active in advocating around, yeah. you know, violence on camp you know just it just be yeah. really, and then more people work yeah. then right. more grads work it's like hey here's yeah. you know yeah <laughs> anyway, interesting yeah yeah even the park blocks themselves you know mm -hmm. all the years of protesting and right. everything that's gone yeah, you know, yeah. yeah. It'd be interesting yeah for sure and that would be a visual thing you could do that yeah yeah, we could make it a map. It could be an interactive map. It could also be an experience that we do with each other. But oh, yeah. If, I don't know, the, during the pandemic, if we're allowed to, you know, yeah. walk around together in the park. I mean, that would yeah. be nice. That yeah. It would be really nice when we can do that again. Yeah. Well, Karen, yeah. Yeah, thank, yeah. You, thank you for your time. Absolutely. It was a real pleasure. Your, and reflections. And yeah. what comes next is you'll get a transcript. I can't tell you when. Maybe at okay. the end of the summer, maybe early next fall um that we can share with you and get your feedback but you this is the okay. beginning as i said of a, of a don't do it in media space i'm learning media space and i hate it <laughs> yeah well, it's a hard copy we'll work with your okay. <laughs> no and and thank you very much it was a lovely opportunity for me and i'm happy to answer follow-up questions if you want to shoot me an email or cool. okay pdx I do. um feel free Thank you. Thank you, everyone, today. Great job. Great probes. Great follow-ups, everybody. Yeah. Looking okay. forward to seeing you again on Friday. Karen, take good care. <laughs> take care. Bye-bye. Signing out. Bye, guys.